This is the Friday, May 12, 2017 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Mark Gold. Mark, welcome back. Nice to be back, Mike. Mark, we got so carried away on the program talking about Chinese beef demand, talking about soybeans, we skipped the cotton market, and that was a big move to the upside this week. What happened? Was it WASD report related? Yeah, I think it was that and we, good demand and it was basically old crop demand, which is pushing it here. So the July really exploded. Uh, we were limit up one day, another penny and a half the next day, whatever it was. But it, it's a nice move in the cotton. You know, coming off these lows, it's a pretty good breakout out here. Now, is it going to last? It, it looks pretty good from a chart standpoint. Okay. Uh, I think what it's doing is, as the old crop rallies, it's going to drag the new crop up and maybe give you a marketing opportunity in the new crop. But at least something's moving out here, and it's nice to see that it's corn. And you know, I think, like you said earlier, it was up over four cents on the week. Yeah. And that, that's a nice move. And yeah. guys need to be looking at that. Can it last? Why not? Okay, uh, push up north of 80. That's a yeah. good, solid level, close yeah. to 82 on the nearby. Yeah, so. I think that would be reasonable. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can push it to 90 cents before it's all done. That would, 88 to 90 would be a good area. On the old crop, but you think new crop will follow along? Yeah, to some extent. Okay. I don't think it'll be. The real demand is up front on this export market. And as long as that holds, the old crop will continue to move. But that's going to drag the new crop up with it. And usually that's a great marketing opportunity on new crop. You bet. Now, we've got a number of questions here from our followers on Facebook and on Twitter. And I want to get started. We talked quite a bit about the demand for live cattle as beef gets hot. Yeah. But Joe in Cologne, South Dakota, wants to know, will the feeder cattle market stabilize or continue on this roller coaster ride? We were limit up on Friday, all the deferred contracts. Yeah. Do we see another limit up day on Monday? It could be. I think that'll be doubtful. The question is, with this volatility, could it be limit down? Oh. Uh, you know, we've seen these limit up, limit down moves in here. We've had some gaps. Uh, I've always said when a market's at its high or low, we see the increase in volatility. We've certainly seen the increase in volatility in the last seven or eight trading sessions in this, both the fats and the feeders. So is that an indication that we're at a high? It's certainly possible out here. So I expect the volatility to continue if we do get into one of these uh, buy the rumor, sell the fat kind of markets, we're going to see the volatility back off a little bit as this market comes down. But if we can spike it again on Monday, do something, approach those highs, then this volatility up and down is going to remain in this market for some time. Okay. All right. So it gives, it, it's, an ex, it's extending our marketing period for, for Abs calves. I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. you got a great opportunity out here. It's going to bring some life into these markets. But guys need to be taking advantage of it I mean, look at where we've come from in just the last four months. Yeah. This isn't something you sit on your hands. You know, I was in Idaho uh, last week with a group of bankers, and I said, you know, when this meeting's over, it's not the time to think about telling your clients to do something. It's the time to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, hey, have you looked at this market? Let's get some puts or let's sell some cattle. Let's do some futures or buy some calls against it. But now is the time to do something. You know, I didn't know it was going to be the limit down the next day. But the fact of the matter is there's, there's things that can be done, and we've had a nice rally. The puts are cheaper today than they were yesterday. Take advantage of it. And you make a good point. We were limit down or almost limit down early in the week, limit up or almost limit up end of the week. You know, there's that volatility. You know, we're seeing these five-cent ranges in the feeder cattle market, which is exactly what we saw the last time we peaked. So I think you've got to be very careful in here. Uh, but, again, this Chinese news... It's been anticipated. It's yeah. here. If we can react past Monday or Tuesday to the positive side, there may be another leg up in this market. Right. So we don't want to just be naked short futures out here. If you're going to sell futures, buy some cheap out-of-the-money calls to back it up. Uh, if you can sell the cattle, sell the cattle, buy some calls, or at least spend the money and buy some puts. All right. Our next question is from Craig in Iowa. And Craig wants to know, he says, the corn market doesn't know what it wants to do. You talked about the 20 cent range we've been in for seven months now. Yeah. He's asking, is this pattern going to continue well into summer? Boy, I hope not. <laughs> uh, you know, we really love the volatility. We like taking advantage of market movements either way, up or down, and protecting our clients. And the market moves down, we can take money out of puts. The market moves up, we can sell cash. We love the movement, uh, particularly at these low prices. You know, if we were at $8 corn, I wouldn't have a problem staying up here. But we're not at $8 corn. We're at 370 380 corn, and that's an issue out here. 
I don't see it lasting. We're heading into the summer months. I've always said that since 1973, we've had at least one opportunity to market corn and beans at profitable levels. We've seen that opportunity already in the bean market. We had ten and a half dollar beans out there, but now can we get it in the corn? I believe something's going to happen, whether it's the fun short covering, whether it's some hot dry weather scare, whatever it's going to be, we're going to have at least one opportunity. Certainly we hope we take it out to the upside. And the market looks like it's trying to form a base. But if we have benign weather, June and July, this market's heading south pretty quick. Given the, the <coughs> factors that we've already got plugged into the corn market, I mean, we know that exports are starting to slow down. We saw that this week. Uh, we, we are planning on slightly fewer acres. How much farther do you anticipate the corn market has to move to the downside? I mean, basically test those 318 lows from yeah. 14 or 13, whatever that was? I think that's a reasonable target. Okay. Uh, again, the funds are long. Are they going to go to... 250,000 short contracts, maybe they do. Uh, I don't okay. see it going beyond that. And who's gonna, who's gonna push it beyond that? Right. Particularly if we get some of this old crap out of the farmer hands and there's less incentive to push this thing lower. Okay. But again, if we have a great growing season, we know how much corn the American farmer can grow, it can be burdensome. You know, I'm hoping something positive happens, particularly on the demand side with the Chinese or somebody else that'll take this market and, and go with it. On the other side, if we get any kind of a real weather scare, I remember in 1983, we made our stone low on June 30, June 29th, the day before the final acreage number at 598 and a quarter in the beans. We rallied three and a half dollars in the beans in the next six weeks. We rallied the corn a buck and a half or a dollar eighty after being on our lows. That was because it had it had rained all month of June, stopped raining on June 1st, started to get a little warm. And then over the 4th of July weekend, it was 100 plus and off to the races we went. Hmm. So it's not too late by any stretch of the imagination. You know, we're just, get, we're just getting the corn planted, let alone in the growing season. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that can still happen out here. A good friend of mine from Iowa, Dick Hines, called me and said, you know, don't forget, plant the beans in the mud, the crops are dud. And there's certainly been a lot of mud out there. So we'll have to yeah. see. Yeah. All right. Our final question comes from Merrill. And uh, Merrill's on Twitter at price help. Merrill says, and it's a two-part question, so I want to get your take on both. Merrill says, it looks as if the economy may move into a recession, and how, do, how would that event affect the ag market? So let's ta tackle that first half. Do you feel as if we're setting up for a recession? You know, I've heard talk of this recession creeping back in, that maybe there's going to be a real estate crash or something else. Unemploy we're almost at full em employment, yeah. according to the economic, even at 4.4, they're considering that full employment, considering where we've been out here. So I don't see that as an issue. Interest rates are still low. Real estate prices keep moving, high, jumping higher yeah. and higher. I don't see any inflation's creeping back into the market. There's not a lot of inflation, but you know, when, when I look at things like cars, rent, houses, uh, groceries, a lot of things are getting more expensive every day. We don't seem to be reflecting that in the inflation numbers. Mm -hmm. So I think inflation is worse than maybe what the government's telling us out here. So I really don't see a recession. If we did have a recession, everybody's going to come back. That's certainly not good for farming. No. But I don't see that happening. All right. Now, our final question comes from a student up at Iowa State University. It comes from Cody. And Cody sent us in a video question. And we'd like to encourage all of you, whether you're at land-grant universities, community colleges, or high school ag students, we'd encourage you, if you've got anything you want to know about the markets or about commodities, get out that phone shoot a little video and send it to us on Facebook or on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about this uh, series that we're doing, you can check us out on the M2M podcast number 143. Now with that, Mark, here's Cody's question okay. to you. So what are the advantages of using futures? Well, short and sweet question. Second. Okay. All right, what are the advantages of using futures? The advantage of using futures, first of all, I'm not sure if he's saying over options or over something else, or whether he's saying not doing anything and then adding futures into it. I'm assuming he's saying not doing anything and adding futures into a marketing right. mix. And there's certainly a huge advantage in that. You can lock in prices when you have profitable opportunities. 
You can lock in using a futures contract to lock in those profits and to know where you stand. Now, granted, it doesn't take into account basis, and basis is going to vary widely around the country, but futures have been around over 150 years. They're a very valuable tool if used properly to manage the risk that are in the markets. So certainly, you can sit there and hope and pray whether you're raising livestock or growing grain or producing milk, whatever your commodity is, you can sit there and hope and pray, or you can be proactive. And I think, you know, for a young guy in college, looking at all the opportunities that are out there, cash sales, futures, options, those kind of things, crop insurance is certainly an important part of it. To look at all those things and to come up with a marketing mix that can help you become a better marketer. So the big advantage in futures is it opens up a whole nother world to you to be able to manage risk, and I think it's certainly a strong way to start in looking at these markets. Yep, I agree. I, I always tell young people, even if you don't ever plan on using futures, even if your, your dad's never used them, your grandpa never used them, learn about them right. because it's going to shape the way you view the markets in which you're going to sell your physical livestock, yep. and it just makes you that much wiser of a person. And I think once you understand them, and, and you're going to be more apt to use them, and then when used properly with a good risk management program, all of these tools can help you do a better job of marketing. And we know the American farmer can grow it. The problem has been selling it. And any tool you can put in your tool belt to help you do that, I think, is a good idea. That's the truth. Well, Mark Gold, thank you so much Thanks, for taking Mike. the time to join us. Thank you. Join us next week when Don Rose will sit across from me here at the Market to Market table and we'll learn how one pork producing family is cultivating fans in Japan. Until then, thanks for watching or listening. I'm Mike Pearson. Have a great week.